Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leo and today I have a really important announcement. Our newest course, the Advanced Seabrush Character Creation course by yours truly is now released. This course is a complete, complete guide on how to create a high poly character ready to go into the production pipeline. So this character is like the starting point for a film character, a game character, any kind of uh, character that you wanna do. This is a great, great place to start. If you wanna check it out, let me show you real quick. If you wanna check out how to get from absolutely nothing, this is literally the first thing we do. We create our base mesh for our character and get all the way to the very last uh, um, process or the last step of the process all the way to this point. It's a lot of polygons, that's why it's taking a little bit longer to load. But if you wanna learn how to do this, I will show you. It's almost 25 hours of content, so imagine like a full day of classes with me. Um, that's it, it's it's ready. It's like 96 different videos. It's it's a lot of content, but I don't skip anything. There's no, no time lapses or anything. You're gonna see every single step of the process to get at this character right here. Uh, we go really, really high in subdivisions, 62 million polygons for all of the different props, all of the different elements, the insert multi-meshes, bandages, cloth, armor, everything. So if you wanna check that out, then um, I'll leave the links down here. We do have the Skillshare promo. Uh, you can check our course for free. And remember, if you leave a comment in this video, this could be the video that we select at the end of the month and you could be a lucky winner and you could claim this course for yourself. But today I have something really special. Even if you don't, uh, or I'd rather, if you buy the course in the next couple of days, in the next five days, you will get a very, very special discount. We're offering, I believe it's 90% discount. So uh, if you guys like my style, if you like the stuff that I teach, if you like the way I teach, I think it's gonna be a, a no-brainer. It's a, it's a bargain for everyone. Uh, the full course is gonna be discounted, again, down here on the description. But today, again, this is what I wanted to say. I'm gonna be offering a secret chapter, a secret like little extra video. We're gonna do one more thing for this character. And uh, if you're watching this video and you buy the course, then you're gonna get a little bit of an extra content. If you, um, yeah, so just, just, just stick around. So uh, what I'm thinking for this guy is I, I would love to 3D print this. Uh, when I was, I talk about a lot about 3D printing, about rigging, about animation while building this this character. I also teach about like the the things that we need to take into account for a character that's gonna work uh, in production. And the, when talking about 3D printing, I I was like throughout the whole series, I was thinking about what if we created a very cool base for this guy, like a really nice base. Like what what would be a, a nice idea? And um, this character is based, of course, in the Dungeons and Dragons. It's, um, there's a race in Dungeons of Dragons called the Tieflings, uh, which are like this, like demon born. They're not demons per se. They just have like fiendish blood in them. Not all of them are bad. Some of them are like good demons and stuff. I know it sounds like a little bit ironic, but it's fantasy, right? So you can do pretty much whatever you want. And, um, there is a very interesting part of the lore inside of, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which is the nine hells, right? So, so there's different like layers of hells similar to Dante's Inferno. And, uh, one of the layers is Avernus. And in Avernus, they are fighting against uh, this, uh, or there's like the commander of Avernus, or the leader of Avernus is this uh, fallen angel called uh, Sariel. I think Sariel. Sariel. There we go. Yeah. So she's like the fallen agent of uh, Avernus, like the the leader, the the president, the, the um, uh, like the queen of Avernus, right? But she has a symbol, and though actually, when I was creating this character for D and D. Um, there's this uh, symbol, which is serial symbol. So I, I thought it would be a cool idea if this tiefling barbarian, uh, he's supposed to be a barbarian, he is uh, kind of like Hellboy. So he's fighting against the demons, right? So he's like a good demon. And, um, and the interesting thing was his initial loyalty was towards her but now she goes or he goes against her, right? So uh, I thought it would be a good idea to incorporate uh, this symbol as the base of the of the print. So let's do it, shall we? Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a subtool and I'm gonna add a cylinder, which is gonna be the, the base of the character. Now, um, I want this to be like a layered stone. I think that would be pretty, pretty cool. I do want to have like a clean, uh, like a clean, like outer frame first. And then on the inside, we're going to have like the, like the more intense effects. So this one's going to be the clean one. We're going to be using a little bit of C modeler right here. We're going to turn on C modeler. I'm going to eliminate a couple of this like edges right here. So we uh, go on top of one edge, 
press the spacebar and we can select the options that are going to be affecting edges and we can delete the edge loop complete. Let's delete some of this guys right here. There we go. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to now again, press the spacebar and hit bevel so that we can bevel this thing right here. And now I'm actually going to bevel with a multiple. Uh, should complete. Let's do four rows. Uh, and let's do a soft edge. There we go. So now when we subdivide, it's going to give us a nice round edge. Shift D to go out of subdivision. Let's um, select all of these guys. I'm going to press Control W to poly loop them. And then I'm going to go into inset and we're going to inset poly group island so that we only insert this guy right here just a little bit something like that and then we're gonna q mesh q mesh polygroup island as well just push this down a little bit so that we create a little bit of a you know something that we're gonna be filling in and then i'm gonna again bevel this thing a little bit there we go and probably bevel this inside there we go so now when we press uh dynamic subdivision we're gonna get this a very very nice, uh, interesting piece. I'm actually thinking about having this some sort of like gold paint or something. So we can go to the materials. Let's go to a gold material, turn on MRGB and say color fill object. By the way, yesterday on the Seabridge Summit, they added another like thing. Uh, it was, uh, there's going to be a new option here that says apply action to all sub tools. So if I paint this up to gold, I can just click that button and then fill everything gold as well. That's super helpful. Uh, it's hopefully going to be available in the next couple of uh, iterations of, of Seabrush. There we go. Let's go back to our startup material, to our basic material. There we go. And uh, that's going to be like the, like the main layer, right? Like he's going to be standing right there. Actually, let me open the post character. So let's open Tyra's post, which is his lighter. Um, his lighter in the um, in geometry because I decimated him, and he's gonna look a little bit better. So let's go here. So like this guy, go back to this one and say append, and we append that one right there. Perfect. So as you can see, that's gonna be like the the first base. Now I'm gonna append a cube, which is gonna work as my stone. And if you've seen like this sort of like a uh, desertic or volcanic looking um, environments, you know that it's usually quite like rock heavy. So I'm going to create like a big plaster of rock, like right about there. I'm going to isolate this real quick. Let's dynamish. And I'm going to use my knife curve. This is one of the brushes that we use a lot in the curse because it allows us to, to create really interesting cuts that will be very difficult or very time consuming to create in a in a more traditional way. <laughs> and just as I say that, Seabrush decides to crash on us. Wow. Well, yeah, we do have a couple of crashes throughout the course as well, but don't worry, everything is recorded so you get every single uh, piece. <laughs> Let's load the tool real quick. Let's load the, the Tharis post again. I, I do think it could be because we were working with really heavy uh, characters. That's fine. We'll, we'll just do this real quick again. Uh, don't worry, I won't uh, bother you by going through the through all of the other motions again. So uh, let me see. We're going to say append again, and we're going to append a stone. There we go. Let's make it thinner. Let's isolate it. Dynamesh. Scale it up. Turn on our knife brush. Do a couple of cuts, like crazy cuts right here. There we go. And just a couple more right there. And then I'm going to start doing some cuts like this. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm uh, sort of like going for, right? So we're going for this sort of like plateau rock thingy. We can even double tap to create like a little bit of a crevice right there. Die in the mesh. And now I actually don't have my tablet on. Give me just one second. Blech. Go. I'm going to use my trim dynamic just to start, you know, just giving a little bit more interest to the to the silhouette of the stone. We could turn on polish on the dynamic so that we get like a like a cleaner cut. There we go. Dynamic. Let's soften up a little bit of that one right there. 
There we go. Just trying to make this thing look as organic as possible. Cool. So now let's bring this down. Let's scale this in. It's gonna be like the main, like the main rock. And then what we can do, this is a, a process that we uh, do quite a bit, is we can reuse the assets. There's no need to reinvent the wheel if you already have something that looks interesting, such as this, right? Let's, for instance, isolate this and say, hey, you know what? Let's split, actually. Let's split. I'm going to do other groups. And then we're going to say split, uh, group split. So each stone it's its own thing. Let's do a quick save just in case. And I'm going to select a dynamic solo. And we can like cut this stone again. All right? Dynamesh. Frame dynamic. And we can start sculpting this thing right here. There's a brush that I really, really like for uh, rock sculpting, which is here in the light box. It's on brushes. Mallet, it's the Mallet Fast. Really good one because it gives this very interesting, like, jaggedy look to things that would be really difficult to uh, obtain in, in a different way. So, really interesting way here to add, like, you know, like scratches and things like that. So now, as you can see, we have a, a secondary rock, right, that's sitting there. We can, of course move it out of the way so that the feet are not touching it. Kind of want to like push it up. And here's where I would start doing a little bit of, you know, sculpting. We definitely need to increase the resolution a little bit more to get more, more detail. And you've seen this like desert rocks that they have this sort of like a uh, layers to them. Right. So, let me actually, like, I'm going to go all the way up here. Let's turn off some of the geometry because he's definitely quite heavy. I'm going to keep the tails and the legs on so that we can see how they interact with the, with the stones that we're doing, but I'm going to remove some of them. It's quite heavy. The, the project is, uh, we're really going high poly with this one. Let's do trim dynamic. There we go. Now this one, very similar. We can just like rotate around. Have it sit here on this side right there. And uh, even though it's the same one, it's very difficult that people notice it because we're going to do them slightly asymmetrical, right? Let's dynamic real quick. Control W to uh, create an auto group right there. I do want to like reduce heat a little bit. So again, with trim dynamic or with uh, the knife brush, we can just like literally take out one big chunk of the, of the stone. Uh, this one looks a little bit off to the center. So I'm going to, you know, just a little bit here. Now I'm going to go with this one and we can start adding some like texture to the ground, right? Just clay buildup, basic clay buildup, clay buildup stuff. And we can get something that looks interesting. And and the, we're fading, right? We're, we're creating a little bit of a fade with the uh, with the elements. Let's go to the other side. Of course, we could add like small pebbles and small like little rocks and stuff. There we go. Let's go with this ones now. Again, clay buildup. I like to use this technique where I just like draw weird lines with the clay buildup. And then with trim dynamic, you just flatten them. And that creates like a really nice, interesting texture. It's kind of like erasing the the texture of the of the clay buildup while keeping the organic uh, nature of things, right? There we go. And I mean, I'm doing this quite fast. So if you spend enough time uh, doing this, you can get even better results. 
Here I'm gonna duplicate this, guys. I'm gonna make it really small. And uh, this is uh, what I like to call the one, two, three rule, which is you always wanna have like a like sort of like visual communication where, where shapes are not always the same, right? So, so in this case, as you can see here, we have like one big, medium and small uh, rocks. And by creating this interesting like layering effect, we can uh, continue telling the story of the of this thing. And notice how we're using pretty much the same stone that we uh, started with, because um, when we rotate it and then move it around, it's, it's again fairly difficult to notice that it's the that it's the same one. Let's go to this one right here. There we go. Now, uh, let's add a little bit of detail to, to the base, right? Because, uh, of course, we're going to have the, what's the word, the, the other like, cylinder thing that, that we had at the beginning. Let me just add it real quick. So you guys hopefully can imagine how this thing is going to look. It's probably going to be like that. There we go. Um, and the, um, and now let's add the, the logo, right? We had this very cool logo right here. And that uh, we actually have uh, this one right here, very like super huge. So let's just save this. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop for now. But if you guys wanna download that, just look for a uh, Serial uh, like logo. We're gonna go to standard brush, a drag rect, and we're gonna import that image from the desktop. Where is it? Oh, don't tell me it was like WebNG or Web WebPG thing. Yeah, it's WebP. Oh my God, I hate this format, man. Okay, I'm gonna show you a super quick tip here. Like it, it's not gonna give us the best result, but it should work. I'm just gonna use my snipping tool and I'm literally gonna snip this thing right here. So just save this image. It's gonna say that I believe it's a PNG. And now we go to ZBrush. Uh, here, we should be able to see it. There we go. Uh, we are gonna have to uh, invert this thing. So I'm gonna go to alpha and we're gonna uh, inverse. So we get this. And now let's go to this rocks right here. I'm gonna give them um, one subdivision level. So we're at full 4 million. And uh, what we can do here is just Let's go to mask. We're gonna use mask uh, pen, the rack rect, and then mask the serial logo. Uh, you can see there's like a fade on the logo. That's not what we want. So I'm gonna go to alpha. And on the modify, we wanna get rid of the blur. Where is it? Or you can just change the focal shift to zero. There we go. Hey. Oh, on the mask, of course. So on the mask, focal shift to minus 100. There we go. So we can have this interesting detail right, right there. I'm gonna use my uh, mask tool and just push this in. And that way we create something really, really interesting. We can dynamesh. By dynameshing, we're gonna um, lose a little bit of the detail, but I think that's fine. It kind of helps with the overall thing. And I'm gonna go to my surface options. I'm gonna add a little bit of noise here. If you've never used surface before, it's a really strong, tool that we have that we can use to, to get interesting looking things here. As you can see, I can modify the, um, what's the word? The scale of things. As you can see, it's gonna give us a, a nice, interesting, like a rock texture. Let's go back to the minute standard, just like play around with the, with the layers again over here. And we can, of course, again, just like smooth things out or use trim dynamic. Like there's a couple of things here and there that are way, way too thin, like those things. So I would probably just like delete them or, or rework the logo a little bit. We can, of course, use clay buildup to, to damage it a little bit and create a, a really interesting effect, right? Dynamesh again. And there we go. We have a, a really interesting, especially when we see it in perspective, you're going to see that there's a something right there. 
over here, I'm, I'm thinking about like we could add like some sort of like chains or like ropes or something. That's uh, of course something that we can do. But let's go back to this one real quick. Uh, again, let me let me do a quick save just in case, and let's do a little bit of a C modeler real quick to to finish up this uh, base and this extra chapter for you guys. I like the idea of having like Easter egg chapters that you can find uh, here in in YouTube for the main courses. Of you, of course, get everything on the on the main course, right? Like everything that we're advertising. But if uh, if you're a follower as well, and you're gonna get this little bonus chapter. I think I did this before for the hard surface course as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like it. Uh, bevel, ba -ba -ba -ba, bevel. Let's bevel here, and then Q mesh island polygroup island. Oh, the first inset polygroup island. And then Q mesh polygroup island. There we go. And of course, like this part right here would we'll definitely need to fill with a with a, like another stone. Easiest one to do here is just grab this one. I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna bring this to the center of the element. And then just rotate it so that we find a side of the rock that covers most of it, like that one. Maybe make it oh. Maybe make it a little bit smaller and just push it down. And as you can see, that uh, that gives us an interesting effect right there. And if we just want to be like super, super precise, we can, of course, just push them a little bit to the side. Like even if it goes out of the of the like band a little bit, I think it's fine. I'm going to go with this one. C modeler again. Let's just do a very quick bevel there. So when we subdivide, we get a really nice soft selection. MRGB, gold, color, fill object. It's just gonna fill that uh, like platform right there. And there we go. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, not bad for a quick base of block out, right? You could definitely use photogrammetry as well. Go out there to the mountain. If you live close to a mountain, I'm not sure if, like, probably not everyone lives close to a mountain, right? Like here in, in uh, I live in Saltillo, I've mentioned this before, in Mexico, we're really close to one of the main, like, mountain systems. So it wouldn't be difficult for me to go to the mountain and, and take some picture of, like, this sort of rocks and stuff. But if you don't have that option, there's, of course, some assets on the internet that we can use, but it's always a, a good idea to to play around and uh, and do it yourself, right? Like like here. And that's it. So there we go. Small little bonus chapter for you guys. Really nice presentation shot. This one right here. Let's take a quick render. See how this looks. This is, of course, not the Redshift render yet. Hopefully, we'll get that uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, but not bad, right? So, yeah, that's it. If you guys want to see how the rest of the character is created, don't forget to check the links down here below. Skillshare, Udemy, and I think a couple of other sites there. That course should be available on most of them right now. Some of them take a couple of extra days to uh, to get to because we, um, well, they have like a checkup process and stuff. But uh, it should be available real, really soon for all of them. And um, yeah, if you want to support us, make sure to like, share, subscribe, check the course down here. I'll see you back tomorrow, guys, for more content. Thank you very much. And that's it for now. Bye-bye.